Hi, Daniel. Thanks for being with us and being an interviewee for How to Build Mobile Apps with MIT App Inventor. Thanks for having me. Well, my name is Daniel Wendell, and I have been leading the StarLogo TNG project for the past uh, six or seven years. And StarLogo TNG is an agent-based modeling and simulation tool that is programmed with a block-based programming language, much like App Inventor. Um, so we've been thinking about how to make the blocks uh, to be something that's easy for users to understand. And I've also been running a training program for teachers where we work with them to develop uh, simulations, maybe activities, activities that their students can use in the classroom that are relevant to whatever else they're learning at the time. What have you learned about teaching with computers and teaching computing that you think is relevant across tools like App to App Inventor and others? Just some tricks and techniques in terms of how to set up a computer lab, for example. Um, we've found that a lot of computer labs are set up in rows, but that, that really doesn't give the teacher very good access to what the students are doing. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of time you'll have students, uh, especially in the back of the room or whatever, uh, playing games or doing something that's not related to the activity. So having the screens face inward uh, with the teacher in the middle lets the teacher do minimal walking while still being able to spend a lot of time uh, with each student looking at what they're doing. Another technique is pair programming or just pair work in general. Uh, we found that if we have a driver and a navigator, where the driver is the one managing the keyboard and the mouse, and the navigator is the one reading the instructions and kind of telling the driver where to go, what that does is help to keep both of them engaged. Because if each person has their own computer, then if one person is bored, they can, again, go off, open up another tab in their browser and do whatever. But if it's your responsibility to be helping one other person, then both people have to agree to go off track. And so that really reduces um, that problem. If you are doing pair work, uh, to be aware of the team dynamics and to really enforce switching off between the two roles. Otherwise, we find that one student tends to dominate and they are supposed to be driving, but they end up taking the instruction sheet and also navigating themselves through the activity. And then one person just sits there and, and uh, shuts off from the activity. So in order to keep both people really engaged in the process, we have to enforce the switching, which can seem kind of hokey at first to the students, but I think it makes a big difference. Do you have any other specific tips or tricks that you would share? There is one more, which is that uh, the computer is more interesting than anything the teacher can say, uh. as a rule. So uh, we have to be proactive about uh, managing the student's attention. Mm -hmm. And one of the best ways to do that, I think, is just to turn off the screens whenever the teacher is talking. And if, especially if you have a room where the laptops or the computers are around the outside of the room, then uh, it's very easy for the teacher to just say, all right, screen's off, and to be able to verify that all the screens did turn off, and then take the attention of the class for a minute. And I would suggest a minute or two at most is the longest you can really hold them in a computer lab. Um, and then they can go back to what they're doing. Great. What about anything regarding programming specifically? Different age groups of kids are able to grasp different concepts um, more and less quickly. Mm -hmm. um, for younger kids, maybe around fourth grade, um, we find that they have a little bit of trouble understanding some of the logic and the flow of the program, but they have no inhibitions. So uh, the way that we would teach computing to them is to give them a couple of blocks that do a couple of things and let them put the blocks together and, and just play with it for a while. And through that process, they begin to discover the meaning of the blocks. Whereas with older kids, um, especially middle schoolers, uh, we find that late middle school, maybe eighth grade, they're really starting to be self-conscious about um, their appearance in front of their, other, their peers and so they're unwilling to make a mistake or what could be perceived as a mistake. 
And so for them, we've taken a much more structured approach where we give them very specific instructions for how to put some blocks together until they've been able to develop some of that intuition. And they are more able to follow that sort of instruction and, and, and uh, detailed direction, whereas the younger kids aren't. And then I think that continues up through high school and begins to taper off uh, in late high school, maybe 11th and 12th grade, where they again feel some more confidence in their ability to tinker and explore on their own. Well, thank you for your time, Daniel. My pleasure. It's great to have you, and we look forward to taking some of your advice in creating apps with MIT App Inventor. Thanks.